Okay, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of Splunk.com 2021 virtual. I'm John Furrier with theCUBE. We're here live in the studios of Splunk's event here. We're all together broadcasting out all over the world here with Chris Diegelmeyer, Chief Social Impact Officer for Splunk. Great to see you. Thanks for coming on. Great, thanks for having me today. I love the title Chief Social Impact Officer because we're bringing in data unlocks value. We know that. And yes. It's the theme of the show. Society has really been impacted by misinformation, what context, we've seen examples of how data has been good and been bad. Yes. So there's a divide there. So you're, this is a big part of your talk. Yes, it, it, it's a big part of me and it's going to be even a bigger part of Splunk going forward. So as many people know, they've heard of the digital yep. divide, right? And that was about access to information communication technologies. Yep. And it was coined 20 years ago, 2001. Yep. And we've made progress on that digital divide, but now we have all that infrastructure, yeah. or a lot of it. And so on top of that, we have the data divide. And that's the increasing and expanding use of data and the gap between using that to solve commercial and provide commercial value in contrast to solving our social and environmental challenges. And so the, the important thing about it is we're early enough that with urgent action, we can yeah. try to close that gap um, and really make a difference in the world. All right, so let's take a step. Let's define the, the data divide and give some specific examples where you see it in action uh, on the pro side and where there's some work needed. Yeah, so all, so the definition is, again, that, that gap between using, we, we have all this data being used for commercial value and relatively weak use of data being used to solve our social and environmental challenges. And we've got four kind of key barriers that we've identified that need to be addressed, um, which we'll get to you know, uh, the questions and how we solve it. One is access, so think yeah. about it. Think of the data that Google has and where that is in access compared to probably the Department of Education in any country yeah. around the world. So access is big. Second is capacity. Um, we need both financial resources, investing in solving our social and environmental problems, and we need data scientists, data stewards, great data people working to solve our social and environmental problems just as we are in the corporate sector. And then the third one is investment choices. And this one is a little bit of a bee in my bonnet. And this happens mostly in the private sector. So we all know you know, every year it's like, what, what hits the return on investment criteria? Yeah. <laughs> and solving social yeah. and environmental challenges often does not. Uh, doesn't have that quite time yeah. frame return on investment. And think about if we'd identified this data divide 20 years ago for climate, because companies are doing yeah. phenomenal work now about climate. What if we had been doing that work 20 years ago around sustainability, around efficiency? And then the last piece is actionable solutions that we can replicate. So those are kind of the four barriers. Um, and again, I think we've got a lot of potential and examples. There isn't one issue yeah. I can think of where more yeah. data isn't going to help us. You know, this is so important. I, I feel very strongly about this because I've seen examples where I've seen really strong people start NGOs or nonprofits or just building an app and they abandon it because they can't get there fast enough. So the idea that cloud and data accessibility can be there, you get to see some success and you can double down on it. That's the cloud way. Yes. So I think this is something that people want to know the playbook. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> where, where are people being successful? What can people do? Yeah. To, to take advantage of this. Yeah, so I, I think that's a really good important point um, is transitioning to the cloud. So think of the nonprofit sector. It's barely there yet. So all of us who are investors, philanthropists, we need to be supporting the nonprofit sector to be cloud enabled mm -hmm. and cloud forward. Similarly with government. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's example after example where, you know, whether it's health, whether it's child and human services, their data is in file cabinets. Think yeah, about that, yeah. think of prime. So we need to digitize those, then we need to data enable that so that we can see those insights that are coming out around those solutions. You know, it's always the, you know, it's always the discussion in the industry inside the ropes and now on mainstream, but getting data to the right place at the right time yeah. is a really important thing. It's a, it's a technical latency, all these things. But practically, it, 
has societal impact. Where would you rank the progress bar in terms of where we are on the digital divide? Because I can see healthcare, for instance, having access to the right information, or it could be something on the um, government side where it could be related to climate change or, hey, get this involved. Where are we on this? So I, I would say on the digital divide, which is the infrastructure piece, um, for most definitely high-income countries, mid-income countries, we've actually made progress. And so they have that, they're all, you know, network, they're cloud, but now they have all this data they don't know what to do with, yeah. right? And so what we need to kind of now t build on that infrastructure to solve for that data. And I'll just, you know, a Splunk example, one of our customers, the Netherlands, um, in their court system, right? With using Splunk, they were able to enable real-time data to inform court decisions. So historically, the judge would ask, you know, this happened in COVID, where are we on bankruptcy cases, right? And historically, somebody would call somebody, they'd call somebody, they'd go dig yeah. the files and they'd get the information three months. Real time, this is what's happening with bankruptcy. In real time with COVID is gonna change those decisions that impact people's lives. So you add that on top, I mean, we have environmental examples working with net zero schools. We have it in, we worked with the Healthcare Coalition with MITRE to enable real-time data with a number of other companies. So, um, where, so I would say we're further along on the digital divide. We're at step yeah. one on the data divide. Yeah, um, Doug Merritt was talking earlier today about how you know, this data plane that Splunk has evolved into this catch basin for all the data and then it becomes useful and yeah, yeah. really taking us through the journey. Now security and it's this control plane that's enabling. Yeah. I think to me that's a real key thing here. So I have to ask, do you see envision a future where we have a data commons where um, citizens and could tap into the data and I mean, the Gov 2.0 yeah. is kind of on that vision. Yeah. What do you, what do you, what do you see this? What do you see? Well, I, I think, and I, I know Doug has talked about this before too, from a value standpoint of, especially with government moving to open data. Yeah. Uh, and then what we have to do is we have to protect privacy, which actually Splunk is really good at doing. Uh, so you've got to take that individual data out of there. But then once you get these big data pools yeah. into these big data lakes, you'll be able to see insights yeah. that you couldn't see before. You know, it's interesting that um, I remember when the internet came around and how the US government is very active. It seems now that the tech policy has always been kind of like, oh yeah, we're kind of involved in DC, but now tech is so important. <laughs> and with all the backlash on the Facebooks of the world of you know, how democracy was broken, there's an opportunity. Yes. And the lawmakers and the people who make the laws are kind of lawyers, they're not really techies. <laughs> so, so like, policy's got to change. How do we do that? Yeah, oh gosh, if I could solve that one on policy <laughs> change. But, but I want to make a comment, because I think it's really important, because you referenced and the, the situation Facebook is in is common knowledge. I give a lot of credit to Splunk as, you know, a data platform company saying, we see this data divide coming and we're going to step yeah. to the table now and do something about it. Because there's a lot of other companies that knew these challenges if they looked out yeah. three, five years and yeah. they made personal or company choices not to do something about it. So yeah. I just- So transparency is super important. Getting well, that out and, there. And, and being again in data and just saying yeah. it's not all roses, yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so, Take, being a purpose-driven company is about making those decisions as a company to have an impact. So then to answer your question on policy, um, <laughs> I would say I think it's really complicated and tricky because yeah. data moves at the speed of sound and policy moves kind yeah. of like a turtle. And so I think what we need to have happen is companies going to sometimes have to lead yeah. the way and hold themselves accountable and then work in partnership with policy yeah. to make you know, policy changes that impact everybody. So again, yeah. we're strong advocates of open data. You know, we're, we, we can't make yeah. the government do it, but we can be a voice for it in service of bridging this data this divide. This data divide is a great conversation. I wish we had more time. Uh, for the last minute, just give a quick plug for what Splunk's doing specifically and how people could get involved and participate. Yeah, so I'll, I'll kind of, I'd say three things. One is that this, 
early stage, we're kind of raising the flag to governments out there, to philanthropy, to nonprofits, like we all need to be paying attention to this. We're gonna be investing in more research on it because it is at such an early stage. We've identified these barriers, but we've gotta go much deeper and build collaborations around the solution. So we're gonna be mobilizing our partners and our customers. We have a $100 million pledge where we donate our product to nonprofits. We, and the equally important thing as I talked about, it's our talent, yeah, right? Yeah. It's getting the talent to help these organizations. It's our strategic giving. So we're mobilizing you know, all of our assets around this pledge. We have a $50 million impact fund, which is around for purpose data enabled companies. So we're trying to do it across a multitude of platforms. Is to that an investment part of fund solution. deploying now, or has it been making investments in companies already? Yeah, we've made um, three investments. Reframe AI is one about using machine learning and AI around the jobs of the future and retraining. So it's still, or it, it was yeah. launched just a couple years ago, so we're still early in nice. the $50 million fund. So we'll be doing awesome. more of that. Sounds like a great opportunity for people out there watching. Enable, enable the people to change the world. Yeah. That's what Splunk's all about right now. Exactly. Chris, thanks for coming exactly. on, appreciate Great. it. Great, thank you. Okay, Cheers. the data divide. We're bringing you all the data here from theCUBE live here in the Splunk studios. I'm Sean Furrier with theCUBE, thanks for watching. Thank you.